Hello everybody. So in this video lecture we're going to look briefly at granites and I'll introduce a new Excel assignment where we'll look at how granites are classified and then look at how that classification plays into how we think they are formed. So to begin with, to come back to look at, to look at what we've seen before. In our field trip to the Mount Gibbons Pluton, we looked at granites or granitic materials that were mostly either granite diorite or maybe uh, true granites, but they all fell in this upper part of the diagram here in yellow. We're going to continue to focus on this yellow field. Uh, these guys here, the foids, cyanites, monzocyanites, monzodiorites, they're pretty rare. And if you're doing any mapping anywhere in the western United States, you're not likely to see these. So we're not going to spend a lot of time on them. So again, when we talk about granites in general or granitoids, we're going to talk about stuff that plots up here. The most important classification scheme that we will deal with to start is this one here, where we take the molar amounts of aluminum, shown here in pink, and compare them to the molar amounts of the total of calcium, potassium, and sodium. And we have three types. Now, because we're ignoring the bottom part of this diagram here uh, in blue, we can ignore mostly this here. We'll do some tests to see if these things exist uh, in the Sierra Nevada. Uh, we'll look at some data in Excel. But this peralkaline case, most of these peralkaline magmas here would plot down here. And again, we expect those to be pretty rare. So we're really interested in this first part of this classification scheme as to whether something is paraluminous or metaluminous. And I'll look at that. We'll look at why that's important in a moment. But just to compare these two, it's really an issue of how much aluminum there is compared to the sum of calcium, potassium, and sodium. Here, the total amount of aluminum is greater, so that pink bar is greater than the sum of those. Uh, so that's the paraluminous case. Uh, so para, aluminous, essentially means you have a lot of aluminum. Metaluminous means that you have less aluminum than the total of calcium, potassium, and sodium. And the peralkaline case is that the case where there's so little aluminum or so much potassium and sodium that potassium and sodium alone out, uh, outmatch the aluminum. So notice here, together when we add calcium, potassium, and sodium, all three exceed aluminum. But if we take out calcium, then the total alkalized potassium and sodium are still less than aluminum. That's not the case here. But again, these are rare. So the way to look at this mathematically is we'll devise this ratio here, the ACNK ratio. So over here, um, the ACNK ratio would be greater than 1. Let, let's break this down. So A is shorthand for Al2O3. So the aluminum here is greater than the sum of C, calcium, N, sodium, K, potassium. Whereas here, the ACNK ratio would be less than one. The amount of aluminum, or the pink bar, is less than this. So just to expand this, this is equal to molar Al2O3 divided by CaO plus Na2O plus K2O. Let's expand that so we can see that a little bit. So the ACNK ratio, this is not my abbreviation, you'll see this in other textbooks. It's this ratio here, the total amount of molar aluminum divided by calcium, sodium, plus potassium. Right? So why do we care about this? We care about it because we think that these here, paraluminous rocks, are so-called S-type granites. So there is in chapter 18, this table, S-type granites are, th are the types of granites that are not only paraluminous, but that we think they tell us about the origin. We think that they have a sedimentary source. So if you take sediments and melt them, you can get a, gran a granitic looking material. Uh, if you, on the other hand, allow a magma to fractionate uh, by a simple bones reaction series that we've looked at before, so you start with a basalt in the mantle, you would get an M-type or an I-type. And these, this I-type is an igneous type, this is something where you start with a basalt and you simply let it partially crystallize 
about 90% or so, and the 10% of liquid that's left will also look like a granite. Now these two granites, the I and S type, are the most common, and so we're going to focus on those. The I type here would be metaluminous, and then the S type here would be paraluminous. This is a complicated table. We're not going to deal with all of the parameters that are in here, but just know that I and S are the most complicated, and we can use this diagram to figure out which one is which. And we expect that most of what we'll see in the Sierra Nevada, and this is uh, the Tuolumne and Trusive Complex in Yosemite National Park, we expect that most of these will be I-type. We'll do some plots to see if they're S-type. Uh, to get you oriented, by the way, here's the state of California. The gray is the Sierra Nevada. Fresno is about there. That little black dot is the location of the Tuolumne Intrusive Complex. This is Highway 120. takes you over to Tioga Pass. So you'd be um, over in the Central Valley over here, and then Levine is out here. And as you go through Tuolumne Meadows, then it's in this area here. And so what we're going to do in the next video, it's going to be an Excel tutorial where we'll look at how to calculate these parameters and then decide whether the, whether the ACNK ratio is greater than one and we have paraluminous and maybe S-type materials or whether it's metaluminous, less than one, and where we have more I-type or igneous related. And again, this is, I, paraluminous is your melting sediments and then over here you take basalt and fractionate it by a typical Bones reaction series fractional crystallization model. So we'll look at that, look at that in the case um, in our next video where we introduce the Excel-related assignment.